What's up, party animals? My name is Kezzy, and today I wanted to do a video that I have been putting off for a little while um, called, I guess, Sampler Showdown is what I wanted to call it. I have the Akai Force, and I have the Polyan Tracker, and they are both beasts of instruments. And I wanted to take these two and pit them against each other because I found that I use both of them quite often, yet they do a lot of the same things in a fairly different way. So we'll compare them. Both, both, both of these are insane musical instruments. Um, the Force is a, has, is a powerhouse of a, of, of a, of a, of a box, of a unit. Um, it can do, it, it's effectively Ableton in a box. It's got all the power of a DAW, um, and it really, I've never found any real limits for the things that you can do. It just has everything. And one of the things I really like about that is because this thing has, you know, it can support USB uh, MIDI devices, it can support sound cards over MIDI. It has its own internal sound card with two inputs and four outputs. Um, it supports basic MIDI inner input output through like the five pin. It doesn't have any five pin ports, but whatever. Um, you know, it supports control voltages. You know, I could control a modular system with this if I really wanted to. Um, you know, it, and it's got Ableton integration. There is, there is so much on this thing. It's actively overwhelming. And that can kind of be a problem. I, I find myself ending up lost on the force a lot. Now, I know it really well, and that's a huge plus, is, you know, I could take this thing, I even have it able to be powered off of a USB power brick with, through some um, special power bricks and special cables, and it works great. You know, I could bring this to a furry con and collab with anyone. You know, I could bring a fancy microphone, I could bring a fancy keyboard. You know, there's a lot I can do with this thing, um, relatively effort-free, you know? I have a whole studio right here, but I don't need all of it to do what this does. So, absolutely blissful device. Um, has so many features, it's almost impossible to list them all. And that's why it's weird to compare it to the tracker. This thing is designed to be limited. I have a finite amount of space for samples. I have a finite number of samples I can use. Everything is fairly finite here, and it's very easy to find those barriers. So you'd think, well, why are you comparing the two? Obviously, the force is objectively better. But there's that mentality of limitations breed creativity. So if you have limitations, if you have, you know, a, a specific workflow you need to use, that's going to cause you to create something different than what you would use if you're using something like the Force that just has no limits. And that's something that I really like about the tracker, and it's smaller. I can throw this in a bag with a little USB power brick and just say, you know what, it's with me now. If I don't use it, oh well. If I do use it, yippee. It, but, you know, if I'm bringing the force, well, it's so big, I feel like I'd be wasting, I, I feel obligated to use it, and so it's, it's, it's harder to convince myself to bring it. I brought this to BLSC, didn't take it out once, didn't need to, it just wasn't useful, and I feel like I probably would have played around on the tracker if I had it, you know, spending time in the car, instead of browsing Twitter looking at pizza memes, I could have been playing on the tracker. All right, let's do this. I have a record player now, uh, and we're going to do some sampling with the Force. Now, this is Akai's... The, Akai has been well known for making the MPC, and it's kind of silly, the sampling process on the MPC. It's a little it's a little more tedious than I would have expected. Now, I have, I've had no experience with actual MPCs, but I feel like there's a few more steps here than there needs to be. So, let's give it a go. So when we're starting from a base project, you already have to go to a few steps. So first, you have to go to Menu, then you go to Sampler, you have to click on that on the touch screen, and then you have to arm it. Now I don't know what arming does, but it means I have to press the record button twice. And then, needle's dropped, go ahead and record. Cool. 
Uh, oh, I need to make a new track. Make a drum track. And you can hold down this and make a new drum track pretty easily. So a drum track, so I'll go ahead and set it to assign to that track. Keep. All right, and now we have one note that does the whole thing. So to fix that, we now need to go to um, the sample chop area. So we'll go ahead and go to sample edit. Uh, first things first, it's super quiet. So we'll shift, actually no. So we have to go to chop, you go to shift, process, scroll through here until we find normalize, do it. There, now it's nice and loud. But it's still just that first note. So go ahead and click on these pad modes. Sample edit pad mode. Now we can actually chop it. We can chop it by hand. So, and I screwed it up. So the pads are here. I can use them. However, the trouble is that all the pads are not in a drum track. I need to process I need to convert it to a drum track before it's actually ready to be used. It's not just ready to use. I have to do something to it, which is annoying. So, okay. And then it's not even on the main page. You have to press shift convert and then new drum track using slices. And it's just got a million settings that I just don't know what they do. And it's just super overwhelming for no real reason. All right, cool. So now we're on this. Ta-da! That's sampling on the Ikai Force. Um, I like it, it's really fun to do, but I feel like it's a very, it's very hands-on, it doesn't have a lot of, like, like, it's, 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 it's hard to describe, but I feel like getting from sample to sampler is a little bit of a tedious process, especially compared to the tracker. You'll see why right now. All right. Now it's time for the tracker, and sampling and arranging is a little bit different on this one, so we'll give it a go. Uh, again, have the record queued to the same spot, so we're going to be sampling the same thing. So first thing, you got to go to the sample loader, or the sample recorder. Sampled. You gotta save it. I love the auto name feature. We're gonna call this moaning. We're not gonna call this moaning education. Sad locket sounds better. Then I'll hit save and load. We'll import it. Now it's there. Then we can go to the sample editor and go ahead and normalize it. Select 100%. Apply. Ta da. It's normalized. Super easy, super obvious. And then we go to sample playback, and that's when we can choose to do beat slice. I stopped, started the recording at a good time, then we'll add. Shift record. Don't need the off notes. Cool. 
So that's sequenced. Uh, sequencing live can be kind of a pain, but uh, cleaning it up and quantizing it isn't the hardest thing in the world, which is nice. Then add this hat here. These two synthesizers, absolutely insane devices. Both of them have their pros and have their cons. They both have limitations that the others might not. These are two insanely powerful devices, each with their own niche that they can do really well in and excel super well. So I love both of these. I could never just pick one. Um, but I wanted to share, like, let's say you are trying to look for a just one synth or just one groove box or just one anything. I wanted to give a quick comparison to see what kind of use cases I use for each one of these because they definitely have been found in different environments. You know, I had the Polyon Tracker when I was out at Base Canyon, but I had the Force when I went to a friend's house. Their feature set's different. You know, one of them's geared for more performance, so I want to try to use the Force during a set at like a furry con or something. But, you know, the Polyon Tracker is nice for if I'm just traveling around and I want something to play with in my hotel room. So, with the power of both of them, it's really hard to just pick one. And so, I made this video. Um, I hope it was fun. I hope it was entertaining to watch. And, until next time, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye!